As Kyle said, um, one of our core values here at Trinity is that we will believe in and wholeheartedly invest in young people. And I'm so grateful to be a part of a church that does that just so well. That vision has been casted and you all have risen to the occasion. And I'm thankful also to be a pastor here on staff that you guys pour into. You pour into our students directly. You pour into them financially so that they'll be able to go on these trips. You pour into them um, through your prayers. But you also pour into having, uh, pour into our church by having a, a staff person that is able to pour into them. And so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I get that role because it's a really fun role to have. Um, for those of you that don't know, I got married on July 6th. So <clears throat> almost a month ago, I was standing up here with Wesley and we were saying our I do's. Um, and immediately after that wedding day, the next day, Wesley and I went on a week-long honeymoon to Canada and it was awesome. And then we got back from Canada and we had about one week to set up our house, our new house, and um, then the next Sunday we left with our students to Fort Smith, Arkansas. And up until a few years ago, Fort Smith, Arkansas was an unknown destination to me. I didn't know about it um, until I started dating a man fr that lived in Memphis who was from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Fort Smith, Arkansas is a town on Arkansas's western border that touches Oklahoma, it is the second largest city in Arkansas, only behind Little Rock. Wesley and I frequent Fort Smith. It's a town that I now have become very familiar with. Uh, Wesley's grandparents live in Fort Smith, so when we floated the idea of taking our students to Fort Smith, um, Wesley's grandma, Gran, as we call her, jumped on it. She was all about it. I don't always get to visit the cities that we go to on mission trip, and that can be a little bit nerve-wracking. Right, so you're you're bringing a 15 passenger van full of students, and you're like, man, I hope this works. Cause, but this time, I had a secret weapon. Gran was my secret secret weapon, and so I, um, Gran is a 76 year old woman, and she loves the Lord with all her heart, and she arranged for us to stay at her United Methodist Church free of charge. Um, maybe the most beautiful facility that I've ever stayed in on a mission trip, so that was definitely an answer to prayer. Um, and when I was visiting this past spring, I said, um, I asked Graham, would you take me through your town? Would you show me um, different, different organizations that we might be able to work with while we're here with the students this summer in Fort Smith? And Graham had spoken highly of a woman named Charlotte Tidwell, and when I met Miss Charlotte, I understood why. When I met Miss Charlotte, I knew that our students had to meet her too. Um, when I think of Miss Charlotte, I think of instantly of a passage in Matthew 25 where Jesus talks about caring for the least of these. Maybe you've heard it. And I wanted to read to you this morning this paraphrased version of the Bible called The Message. It's uh, a version of the Bible, a translation, sorry, a paraphrase of the Bible that a guy named Eugene Peterson is responsible for that project, um, trying to paraphrase the Bible into a more modern day understanding. So this is how he paraphrases Matthew 25, 31 through 40. When he finally arrives, blazing in beauty and all his angels with him, the Son of Man will take his place on his glorious throne then all the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort the people out, much as a shepherd sorts out sheep and goats, putting sheep to his right and goats to his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Enter, you who are blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? 
When did we ever see you hungry and feed you thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling you the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. The word of God for the people of God. You might not be able to tell from the video that we just watched, but Miss Charlotte is 74 years old. She is a light, she is a joy, she loves students, she loved our students. And I don't think any of them questioned that. Miss Charlotte looks to serve those that are overlooked and ignored, the least of these. And her attitude was contagious. I'm going to have a few of our adults and students share today. I'm going to first have Melissa Fitzgerald um, kind of talk about what we did while on this trip. So this trip was a little different, I think, than maybe some other trips that we've taken. Um, a lot of times you think of mission trips as like, you know, playing with kids and VBS or things like that. Um, this was a little more messy, kind of gross, truth be told. Um, so Miss Charlotte has a huge warehouse and she gets uh, food from her local food bank but then also donations of food. And she's adamant that she doesn't send out anything that's remotely rotten or partially rotten or could be perceived as rotten. So guess who got the job of picking through cantaloupes and cherries and tomatoes? I know you're excited, right? Um, so that's what we did most of our week. And these weren't, just, these weren't just a little rotten. These are like you pick up the cantaloupe and your finger goes through it rotten. Like, it was, it was dirty, gross, hot work. And smelly, rotten fruit, right? I think that one thing that I learned on this trip, and I, I hope the students would say the same, is that uh, sometimes it's, it doesn't feel as fulfilling to pick through cantaloupes, right? Um, but we did get a couple of opportunities to um, actually hand out bags of the items that we sorted through. And, you know, that, that, was, that was a great experience, but that couldn't have happened had they not spent hours picking through rotten cherries and cantaloupes. So I think that, you know, this, this week really taught all of us that sometimes the stuff that isn't as glamorous and isn't quite as fun and maybe isn't as people-oriented as you might think is the most people-oriented work that you're doing because it has such a huge impact on uh, the people of that community. Now I'm going to introduce you to four of our students. Well, I'm actually going to have them introduce themselves. But if you're one of my four, will you come on up? I'm really proud of these students. It's always kind of nerve-wracking when you have to get up in front of people, and so they've volunteered. Okay, so I just want you to be able to see them. <clears throat> so first I want you to tell me, tell, I know, I know you guys and I know your names, but will you tell them your name, what grade you're going into, and then what year of mission trip this will be for you? I'm Asher, I'm going into eighth grade, and this is my first year on mission trip. Oh, I'm Alina, I'm going into seventh grade, and this is also my first year. I'm Kayla, I'm going into ninth grade, and this is also my first year. I'm Adina, I'm going into seventh grade, and this is also my first year. You kind of notice a theme. This was not all of our first timers this year, but these are just a few of them. And so I'm really proud of these students in particular because every year that you go on mission trip, it's hard to be away from your family for a week and to really embrace the mission. It can be a little bit intimidating, but these students worked really hard. And so I'm going to ask you guys, um, we can just go down the line, but what's something that you 
like a, a memory that you have from this trip or something that you learned from Miss Charlotte? Um, I learned how the food that we distributed can impact others in the community. Um, uh, I guess one of my favorite memories um, would be uh, one of the meetings that we had um, after our second Walmart trip. <laughs> um, so uh, we got back and we had a meeting, and um, I was kind of expecting the adults to all yell at us, which is kind of what they did. But then after that, <laughs> um, I actually got a chance to talk, uh, being that it was my first year. Um, it's usually hard for me to socialize anyway, so <laughs> I got to share about kind of why it's hard for me, and I learned a lot about other people too, so. Um, well, one of the most, uh, one of my memories is going through the cantaloupes, because I was the one to help with that, and um, just to see, because I know a lot of us didn't necessarily want to do that, and but it did help out other people in the long run, and same with the cherries, I helped with those too, and so it's just cool to see how it impacted them. So I was helping with sorting out moldy cherries from a bag. And so I remember it was like from over to that, from over that wall, maybe to here, of cherry boxes that are like this high stacked. And we had to open them and take out each moldy cherry <laughs> for half the day. And, and then, one of them, we sat on the table and it started smoking. <laughs> and so I just remember not really wanting to keep doing that for another half of a day. But then we got to see that people getting the cherries and not, have, not having to worry about there being moldy cherries in their bag. Um, but getting to see what how it impacted, that small thing that we did, how it impacted other people. It was just a cool thing to see, so. Okay, so my second question for you guys is, what, how is this gonna impact what you're doing here in our community? Uh, what have you learned that you can take with you to this community? Uh, I mean, this is probably going to sound really cheesy, but um, it's really made me think about how much I actually have in comparison to a lot of the population. And um, I'm probably going to stop complaining about everything because <laughs> um, I now realize how much that I actually have in comparison to a lot of the people. Um, this trip makes me want to like do more in my community because I saw Miss Charlotte. She was 74, and on the last day, we were handing out uh, food to veterans, and she uh, had fall. She had fell in the bathroom the day before and broken some of her ribs, and yet she was still working, and like she wasn't complaining about anything. And so that just makes me want to be a better person and not take as much for granted. And. Well, so, yeah, like Kayla said, seeing that Miss Charlotte had broken her ribs the day before and she was still there working with broken ribs, like, makes me want to, like, go out more and, like, just if I have a little, like, bruise on my knee, this work it out. Um, we were at a, uh, nursing home, that's what it's called, um, and a few of the girls were singing, and we were, there was just like a few people listening, and they were telling us how we were just angels, and how that we should just keep doing what we're doing, and it made, made me realize that even those little small things that we do, even just like singing to people, 
it makes a huge impact because it makes them feel like people care. So it was just a big thing. Thank you, guys. You can have a seat. Now, we're going to have Eddie Rubin come up. He's one, another one of our adults on the trip and share a little bit about what he saw from our students. What did I see from the students? Hard working. As you notice at the community garden, they, they had with knot grass. So we had to lay this tarp down to kill the knot grass. And we, were, we had used all the supplies that we had. And I was talking to Miss Charlotte, and she goes, you guys got it done. Wow. And every time we do something, Miss Charlotte would say, you guys got it done. Thank you. And now, to, con to say something about this wonderful person right here, plan a wedding, go on a honeymoon, and plan out this mission trip. I want to boost her in front of this congregation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eddie. Another thing that we say around here is that we believe that our students are not just the church of the future, but that they are the church of today, that they have something to offer us now, as Kyle was saying. And we repeat that so often because we want our students to know that there is not a day that they're going to arrive at. There's not going to be an age where it suddenly uh, becomes more clear or they become more capable to do the kingdom work that God is calling them to do with their lives. We hope to communicate to our students that there's work to be done right now and that they are capable of doing it today. That there is work God has for them to do right now and that they are capable of doing it today. That they're not the church of the future, but they are the church of today that they have something to offer right now, and it's just as important as what God will be calling them to accomplish 20 years from now. And as a pastor to our students, I encourage students constantly to look for the ways that God might be asking them to serve. That's the reason we take our mission trips every year. We want to awaken these passions and these abilities in our students that will follow them home to their community. We want them to ask God, maybe for the first time, what do you have for me to do? What's my role here? And I want to challenge you this morning to ask the same question. What does God have for me to do? I was struck this week in Fort Smith by a go-getter named Charlotte Tidwell. A retired nurse in Fort Smith, Arkansas. As a nurse, she spent her career caring for those that were ignored and overlooked. As we talked about earlier, caring for the least of these. And at the age of retirement, when I feel that it would have been totally appropriate for her to buy herself a Lazy Boy recliner and prop her feet up and pat herself on the back for a job well done, she continued asking, God, what do you have for me to do? And she felt a call on her life in her 50s to feed the hungry of Fort Smith. It didn't start as anything fancy. She started feeding people out of her home, but 20 years later, God was able to take Charlotte's yes and turn it into Antioch Youth and Family where she feeds hundreds of thousands of people annually. If you could just walk through this facility and see her vision, she wants a community pantry and she's got it all set up like a grocery store. She's got a commercial kitchen where her vision is to teach people how to can, how to can food so that they can have it for the whole year. I wonder who in our community the overlooked and ignored could be seen because we say yes to God. Wesley and I in our new marriage are trying to figure out what it looks like to say yes to God. And this past month has me a little tired. 
In fact, earlier this week, I felt like I deserved to prop my feet up a little bit and rest. But as you know, there were things that Trinity was doing this week. Monday, we had our Sweet Reads program where we passed out books and popsicles to children in our community at various parks. Tuesday, we had our mobile market. That's outlined in your bulletin as well, but it's this program that we, we do because of the St. Louis Area Food Bank where they'll drop off pallets of food and we get to distribute it. And so people come to our building and they drive through the portico and we hand them, this week it was cabbage and pears and watermelon and eggs. But this week I was tired. And so I was surely not motivated to do much else besides rest. But my sweet new husband said, Kristen, think of what God might do with us if we simply show up. We don't have to be always real inventive. Sometimes I get it. Sometimes we don't have the energy to be really inventive, right? But what might God do with us if we simply show up? May it never be too late for God to awaken a call in us. Whether you're 13 years old or 67 years old, my hope for us as a church is that we continue to say yes, that we continue to see and serve those who are typically overlooked and unnoticed. Greg's gonna come and he's gonna play a song as our benediction. And would you just, as you're singing, just prayerfully ask God, what is mine to do? What's for me? What, What do you have? What are you calling me to do, even at this age, no matter where you are, no matter how mobile you are, right?